morning and welcome to our online service with HF Church. If you are tuning in for the first time this morning, we want to say hello and we look forward to the opportunity to meet in person, hopefully one day soon. You'll see a link below, which is our online connection card, and we'd be so honored if you took a moment to fill that out. For families with kiddos in your home, we invite you to check out some really cool content on our HF Family Facebook page that will help grow your kids in their faith. Just a reminder that it's because of your faithful giving of tithes and offerings back to the Lord that we're able to continue ministry both within our community and faithfully around the world through our mission support. There are two ways in which you can give. Number one, simply by mailing a check directly to the church at 272 Route 206, Hamilton, New Jersey 08037. You can also give securely online on our website at hamiltonag.church. Listen, we know these are difficult times and we are being stretched in different ways. Know that God has not forgotten about you and we haven't either. If we can serve you in any way or pray for you specifically, please connect with us on the link below. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Ben as he leads us in morning worship. Good morning. Um, my name is Pastor Ben, and we are so excited that you're here to worship with us this morning. I'm going to pray, and we're going to hop right in together. Lord, we thank you so much that you are our King. Lord, that you are our, our Lord, that you're our Savior. And Lord, this morning, as we continue to celebrate your resurrection, um, we just fix our eyes on you. We thank you. Lord, that you are who you are. Lord, that we can trust you, that we can put our faith in you. And Lord, this morning as we worship you, I pray that you would be near to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. 
as we continue to celebrate your resurrection, your victory over the grave, Lord, we thank you that it is because you live that we can live and have our being, Lord. Jesus, we love you as we continue to worship you. Jesus, I pray that you would be near to us. And Lord, just truly remind us of the power that's in your resurrection in your life. God sent his son. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. He and forgive. He lived and died.
not because he lives. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know. Because I know He holds the future And life is worth the living Just because He lives And my thank you so much that you live, Lord, that we serve a living and attentive and loving God. And Lord, this morning, as we continue to worship you through the reading of your word, pray that you would speak to us, Lord, that you would be near to us, and Lord, that you would truly show us the value of you and your resurrection. God, we love you so much. We thank you for the victory that you had, not just on the cross, but in the empty tomb. We love you. We thank you so much. We pray this all in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to HF Church at Home. If you missed it in the last segment, my name is Pastor Ben. I'm the associate pastor here at HF Church, and I'm filling in for Pastor Jimmy this week. I'm so excited to just get the opportunity to speak a little bit of what God has put on my heart this morning. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for all of you out there who have been tuning in faithfully to our live messages on Sunday morning. Um, I know the past couple of weeks we've been experiencing some technical difficulties, and we thank you for your patience in that. But Lord willing, I think that we're all set this week. Um, I know that it looked uh, most likely different for you and your family this year, but I hope that all of you guys had a wonderful Easter last week. Um, for me, not entirely sure how this tradition began, um, but every Easter I drive back to Pennsylvania, um, and we normally will have lunch together, and we always have Easter omelets. <laughs> I don't know how it began. I know it's kind of a little bit weird, um, but it's one of my favorite Easter traditions, and I missed it last week. I missed it. The good news is that as amazing as our weird little Easter traditions might be that we missed last week, the reason we celebrate hasn't changed at all. He is risen, he is alive, and he's still alive this morning. So even though we didn't get our Easter omelets or ham or whatever your tradition might be, um, we can come together grateful this morning that he is risen. Amen. So what we're going to do, we're going to hop right in this morning. Um, but before we do, let's ask God to bless this time. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. Um, and Lord, we thank you for your resurrection and your life. And Lord, just, the, just as we pr uh, sang this morning, it is because you live I can face tomorrow. And because you live, all fear is God, gone. Lord, we thank you that your resurrection changed everything for us. And this morning, as we continue to celebrate that, I pray that you would be near to us, that you would speak to us. Lord, we love you and we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, today, um, we start a brand new series called Every Day Changed. And in this series, we're going to be exploring together how Easter changed everything. And it really did. Uh, nothing is the same since Jesus rose from the dead. And for us as followers of Jesus, this monumental moment in history changes our every day. 
and changes us every day. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I invite you to open up to John chapter 12, verses 23 to 28. And if you don't have your Bible, feel free to pause the video, um, run and get your Bible, and then come back. Um, so, you, Or if you want, the, the scripture will also be on the screen here, um, so you can follow along. So let's read together. John 12, 23 through 28. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. In this scripture... Jesus has just resurrected Lazarus, just to add a little bit of context. Just resurrected Lazarus from the dead. He just had his feet anointed with expensive perfume at Bethany, and he just rode into Jerusalem on his donkey, people yelling, Hosanna, placing their coats and palm branches down on the street before him. At face value, in terms of popularity and fame, Jesus is at an all-time high. And in the disciples' eyes, I'm sure that they think things couldn't get any better than what they were right then. You know, everyone's made fun of me, saying I was crazy for quitting my job to follow this dude. And now look at him. My dude is a rock star. <laughs> the disciples are hyped. The city is buzzing. But it says that Jesus' soul is troubled because he knew the sacrifice that he was about to make. He says that the hour for him to be glorified has come. I'm sure that the disciples were like, dude, did you just miss what just happened outside? People are going nuts. How could you be more glorified than that? And to describe what he means, he uses an analogy of a seed. Here. How a seed must die. I don't know if you can see that. How a seed must die, go into the ground, and then when it rises again, it multiplies what it once was. And Jesus' idea of glorification wasn't in large crowds, it wasn't in name recognition. It was in death and resurrection. And that is still true for us today. Here, Jesus describes for us one of the most crucial aspects of being one of his followers. And it's this feature that is the beginning of righteousness. It's the spark that lights the, the fire of sanctification. It's the very thing that separates us from the world. And that is death to self. Death to self. God is the creator of all things, and I just find it fascinating that he designed the world the, world, the way that he did. Um, especially around this time of year, we all love flowers, right? They are the mark of spring, of new life, of the death and frost, of winter being revitalized and reborn. And Jesus here calls to remembrance that the beauty of a flower isn't possible without the death of a seed. And when we garden and grow crops, we bury a seed 
in the hopes that when it emerges from the ground, it, it becomes something new, something beautiful, or maybe fruitful. And for us as followers of Jesus, as reflections of Jesus who died, we die to our old way of living and emerge into something new, something Christ-like. Death to self separates us. And it's our mark as followers of Jesus. This is what allows us to love fiercely, to forgive easily, and live abundantly. Death to self is where true life begins. And on that fateful day on the cross, he wasn't just paying our debt to sin. He was showing us a new way to be human, a new way to live. And he promises that when we die to ourselves, just like this seed, which I don't even know if you can see this. It's, it's a coffee bean, so forgive me, um, which I guess is a seed. I don't even know how that works. Um, <laughs> just like this seed, we rise again to a new life, an abundant life, where the little that we had, the little that we were, is now multiplied into something new. As followers of Christ, we are to mirror his death and resurrection as we lay down our selfish desires and choose to live like him instead. Even just this morning, I was reading my Bible, spending time with Jesus, and uh, as I was preparing this message, um, this just felt too prudent to, to, to not put in here. But I was reading Romans chapter 6, and it says this, uh, chapter 6, 7 through 8. Um, For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. If we skip further into verse 11, it continues on by saying, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Most of us are stuck at home right now. And what it means to lay down our selfish desires may look a little different than it used to. Um, before, it might have been slowing down and holding a door for a colleague, or being kind to that one coworker that just drives you nuts. Um, now, <laughs> the only door to hold is to the fridge <laughs> to check if snacks magically appeared in there since the last 10 minutes that you checked. Um, and the only coworker that we might have is Netflix. <laughs> uh, for many of us right now, our lives look drastically different than what they did a few weeks ago. But that doesn't mean that the formula that Jesus gave us has changed. In fact, if you're like me, sometimes being at home can make you uniquely selfish at times. You know, you have your shows, you have your blankets, you, you've got your bed, um, all that type of stuff. And from a different angle, I know that many of you guys at home right now are struggling with a lot of unknowns. Unexpected disappointments. Um, important plans that you may have been forced to cancel. Some of you guys right now are facing unemployment and financial fears. Um, one thing that I've learned personally in this season is that part of dying to ourselves is relinquishing control. It's odd for us right now because for most of us, control was ripped out of our hands. Uh, we didn't even have a choice about it. Um, as many of you guys know, uh, Lauren and I just got married, um, which is super, super exciting. Um, amazing, amazing time in my life and our lives. Um, the date that we had to get married was set as April 4th, um, which just two weeks ago yesterday, which is crazy. Um, as you can imagine, um, our wedding being set in this time, um, we had a lot of plans that changed pretty quickly. Um, I remember when the CDC recommended that meetings of 50 plus be canceled. 
And Lauren and I just sat in our car and cried together because we knew that what we had planned for our wedding uh, wouldn't be possible. As things got stricter, we had to keep changing things and until finally April 4th came and uh, we decided to just get married, the two of us, at Pastor Jimmy's house with two witnesses. And at the end of it all, the day was perfect. It was so, so special. But the process of getting there was extremely painful. Um, all of us, in one way or another, have experienced the pain of having control taken away from us in this season. Um, whether it be with employment, uh, with our schedules, or even with big life events like prom or vacations or <laughs> even weddings. Um, in these times, we can choose to do one of two things. We can desperately cling to the limited things that we can control, um, or we can die to ourselves and trust that God is in control. In fact, I think that if anything, this season has gone to show us that control is really an illusion most times. Um, I don't have control over as many things as I think that I do. Jesus, when he spoke in John chapter 12, um, had everything that most people spend their whole lives searching for. He had fame. He had popularity, he had name recognition, but he said that true glory didn't come from any of that. It came from dying to yourself, allowing God to transform you into something new. Just like a seed dies and emerges as something new, we live in a truly unique time where we can die to ourselves we can relinquish control, and we can emerge as something new. Most of us are stuck at home right now. Our schedules have been forced to clear up. Um, can I just challenge you? Use this opportunity, use this time to draw near to Jesus. James 4.8 promises us that when we draw near to him, he draws near to us. And that is truly comforting in these times. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you so much that we can relinquish control to you, that we can trust you, that we can die to ourselves knowing that there is new life in you. And Lord, right now we reflect on the words of Galatians chapter 2, that I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Lord, we thank you so much that you died for us and that you rose again for us. It is because you live that we can face tomorrow. And our hope is in the empty grave. And Lord, this week, I pray that we would be able to live every day changed because you have changed our every day by raising from the dead. God, we love you. We thank you for this time when we can come together and look into your word just for a small amount of time this morning. We love you and we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Here at HF, our goal is to help you find and follow Jesus. If this is your first time listening in with us, or if you made a decision for Christ this morning, uh, would you just click the link below in the description and fill out a short connect card? This just allows us to reach out and stay connected with you throughout the week. We love you guys, we miss you, and we pray that all of you have a wonderful rest of your week.